All right, guys, the time has come to get this ready. This guy ready for new game plus. Now, there's a lot of steps to take before that to figure out what's, what what to get ready, what to milk out of this playthrough before moving on to the next one. And I think one of the, one of the biggest and most obvious ones really is the Titanite slabs, because they're limited. You can farm all you want of all sorts of other upgrade items, but the Titanite slabs you're gonna run out of. If you well. It, you're probably not maxing out that many weapons per playthrough necessarily, but it's still good to get every one you can, because there's a limited number per character, ultimately. Unless you're going to do New Game Plus, 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 Plus 9 or something so far in that the scaling stops. Uh, so you get eight through. You can get 8 through, uh, per playthrough total. I have 5 in my inventory right now, and I have a level 10 weapon, so that means that we have 6 so far. So just to recap the locations, I got one from completing Zigward's quest. That's probably the most missable one, because if you mess up the quest line at any point and it just disappears, then you just lose that one. There's the one I found behind the bookcase in the middle of, of uh, the Grand Archives. Uh, there's going to be one that I get from trading the coiled fra uh, sword fragment to the crow, which I might as well just do now. I probably have a bunch of bones. Yeah, I have 17 bones, so who cares? Let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, here we go. By the way, if you recognize the order at which I'm reading these off, it's because I am reading them off of a wiki. And you probably should too. Because if there's any time to spoil yourself in a, in, a, in a Dark Souls game, it's probably when you're entering New Game Plus and doing the last things before leaving. It's like, you've beaten the game now. You can finally stop being afraid of things getting exposed to you and stuff like that. So we're going to leave this Coiled Sword Fragment, a key item that gives me infinite teleportations and also has cool lore implications and so on and so forth. And now it's going to be on the ground. Because it has one last duty to fulfill. Bam! Titanite Slab. That's a big deal. We'll be, we'll be back with these guys later. Alright. Next one on the list is the one that you guys saw me get from killing the three winged knights. The, th the actual knights that have actual wings for once, as opposed to just being called that ne very near the end of the game. But this one is the one clever one that I truly and utterly missed. I figured there'd be a Titanite Slab with the crows, and I just hadn't gotten around to it yet, because there's just always crazy trades with those guys. But this one was a surprise. So this elevator... ...doesn't work. There we go. <laughs> I was like, why isn't it moving? Alright, so this elevator's a trick! It's much like the one when you first get... when you first meet Zigward, or when you... or if you play the DLC for the uh, Bloodborne, you're also familiar with this concept of, like, a uh, double elevator. And it's got a secret for me. Sneaky, sneaky elevator. They lull you into a false sense of security that these things aren't going to do anything, because for so long they don't seem to. But this one's holding a secret. Hi there. Tight night slab. You clever bastards. And just like that, I've got all eight slabs. But I'll recap the other ones in case you forgot or, God forbid, didn't watch the previous episodes. Uh, one of them you get from killing Haffle at Archdemon Peak. He's in a, a, a little secret alcove up, an, up a ladder around the corner near, near the uh, bell. Another one you get after defeating Nameless King, it's on the ground. And then the last one you get by placing all of the Lords of Cinder's ashes ah. up top. And then coming to the Handmaiden and buying this one for 30,000. And then that's all eight slabs. The next step's fairly straightforward. Uh, try to find every secret in the game. Try to pick up, find... Uh, trade for or purchase every unique item, every unique spell, every unique weapon that you can in one playthrough. Or, you know, just stock up on the boss souls if needed, and you can make the decision later if it's one of those items. Then, if you want to do it, this is your last chance to respec. Where you want to go to Rosaria's Fingers. Here I am, working on a mage build. It's a bit of a work in progress. Oh well. My, my soul level didn't stretch as far as I was hoping it would. <laughs> Here we go, though. And yes, even when she's dead, which she did in my, she died in my story as part of some sort of que oh, the, the quest line with the invader guy. He went down, so I'm working on my sorcerer build for the next playthrough because that was the, by large, the biggest winner. Uh, people want a lot of things though. People want me to play uh, faith. People want me to play uh, a lot of things really. Uh, Strength, strength, faith came up a lot. Pyromancer came up a lot. So was, the audience was pretty split, by the way. Uh, so I'm using con the uh, 
Scarlet's Candlestick. I'll have to double check, but I think this is supposed to increase my... It's supposed to increase my ability to cast and actually deal damage. Next step, and this is up to you about whether or not you want to do it or not, but you have, it's basically time to go start murdering all the NPCs you can. <laughs> Out of here. I can't currently use this thing because I'm short on one point. I'll work on there. There we go. The Xanthos Crown. That's one of those leftover items I never got around to. Because you're supposed to kill the uh, Xanthos Invader in the uh, Road of Sacrifice. And he I forgot to Ember in that particular moment, so he never invaded me. But there he is, little bastard. I got his hat after all. But yeah, you want to kill El basically every NPC in the game. Although you want to make sure it's your last action of the entire playthrough. Because uh, if you kill every NPC, they often drop unique items. That said, you have to deal with, you know, killing every NPC, so you might feel bad about that, so it's really all up to you if you want to do that from a role-playing perspective or not. But it, it's often worth the loot. They're all about to come back in the next playthrough anyway. It's time to pick up on one more little secret that I picked- that I missed the first time around that's gonna be useful for my build. Which is one of the rings that increases your spellcasting. By the way, this is- I'm specced more or less now. I might put one more, more point into faith so I can wield the candlestick, but I probably won't be using it as a weapon at all. Here we go. I'll go I'll go over the details of my build in a moment. Did he drop something? No. Alright, so I completely missed this. This thing over here, sneaky little bastard, looks just like a window. It's a door. So once I had, once I had the jailbreaker's key, I could open this, which kind of surprised me. And it's a shortcut. Clever. So once you have that key, you can walk straight from that starting point just right to here, completely skipping the first area. Granted, very easy to evade through that entire area without getting hit at all, but still nice. Ooh, got a little worried I was going to fall there. There's the Bellowing Dragon Crest Ring. And... Yeah, I don't know, depending on how... I don't know about, I don't, don't know about fall damage for sure, but you might even be able to skip all the way down there, which means that you can go straight from the first bonfire all the way to the bridge that takes you to the next bonfire, but at that point I guess the shortcut's not very useful, because you probably made it there already. I honestly don't remember where the jailbreaker's key was in the whole thing. So this greatly boosts sorceries. A special ring given to those who are deemed fit to undertake the source, uh, journey of discovery in Vinheim, home of sorcery. Greatly boosts sorceries. Apropos to the dragon school, the seal depicts an everlasting dragon. A bellowing dragon symbolizes the true nature of the consummate sorcerer. So, to go over my, the equipment I have right here, I have the Scholar Ring on, which gives me five extra intelligence. Young Dragon Ring gives me better sorceries. Bellowing Dragon Ring gives me even more of a boost to sorceries, which seems handy, because, yeah, like, my, uh, my co-op playthrough I'm going, I have right now, I have two, I have the two Pyromancer, uh, rings. Boost Pyromancies, and greatly boost Pyromancies, and guess what? Pyromancies got real scary as a result. Then I got the Magic Clutch Ring, which is that it'll increase my magic damage by even more, but it will then make me more vulnerable to dying, which will be a fun thing to worry about. I'm wearing the Crown of Dusk. Oops, now I'm not. Which I believe increases my casting damage by like 10%. I've got the Scholar's Candlestick, which you get from the Duke's Archives. Or, the Grand Archives, sorry. Uh, you just go kill a bunch of the, guy, the Candlehead people, and one of them will drop one of these sooner or later. I already had one. And then the Court Sorcerer's Staff. I don't honestly remember where this one's from. But it must have not been a boss soul, because I already had it. So it's something I found on the ground somewhere. That's already upgraded to 10. Upgrading the candlestick doesn't matter, because it, it, it you can't make its buff more powerful, I don't think. So, more or less, this is my build. I might put one more point into faith, just to make the, the candlestick not have a red X on it, because that annoys me. But I probably won't be using it as a melee weapon, because it's really bad. <laughs> so maybe if I'm really amused by it or something, I can do that. Right now, I'm kind of messing with different spells. I have Great Heavy Soul Arrow equipped, I have Affinity equipped, and I have Tears of Denial. Affinity is mostly just to have a dark spell equipped. I might do a dark melee attack or something. Tears of Denial is handy. Because while, while it's active, if I take uh, deadly damage, it'll help me survive. Which might be a way of, n of getting away with fewer uh, health-based Estus Flasks, but it'll be... It'll take some experimentation. Let's see, that guy's right down there. Hey, buddy. Let's test this out. Fuck your general direction. <laughs> Alright, New Game Plus. You maybe be afraid. Oh, cool. Tears of Denial is a really obvious giant glow in the middle of my character. 
That'll come in handy for trying to tell whether or not it's, it's currently active. Hopefully there's a nice visual indicator of when it's running out or something. Because I don't want to be caught off guard by be suddenly not being invincible. <laughs> not truly invincible, but not ready to die entirely at least. We'll see how this goes. Obviously everyone's dying in one hit because we're still in New Game, although I don't know how much tougher New Game Plus will be. I'm wearing the Armor of Favor. No real reason. It just looks kind of cool. So it's worth it to take one last look at the Shrine Maiden, who you've hopefully handed every single Ash to. And just go through these upgrade items, like the Twinkling Titanites and the Scales and stuff like that. And, you know, stock up if you want to. Like, I could buy 12 chunks right now. Uh, probably not the biggest problem, because if you've been thorough throughout your playthrough, you probably have the spare upgrades you need for for next playthrough, but you might as well get them now. There's no, no, real, no real reason to skip up on them. You can also start buying all those unique armor sets from the that you can have access to, which I've bought a fair chunk of at this point. You might not ever use them, but it's kind of just nice to have everything. Because otherwise you're just going to have to give the ashes to our next playthrough and unlock them again. This of course also includes going to your various spellcasters and just making sure you grabbed everything. Because it would be a real pain to have to re-unlock them if you choose to use them in the future. I don't think I quite got, quite got around to this after I beat the boss, but let's get into the actual Soul of the Lords, the final boss fight soul, and what you get for it exactly. Soul of the Lords. Since Lord Gwyn, the first Lord of Cinder, many exalted lords have linked the first flame, and it is their very souls that have manifested themselves as Defender of the Flame. Here's the big one. <laughs> uh, so the, the Sunlight Spear, the ultimate lightning spear. Miracle of Gwyn, the first lord, hurls a Sunlight Spear. The tales of Gwyn's archdemon, or archdragon hunts describe the inception of the Age of Fire. So this is interesting, because... I play Dark Souls 2 as a Miracle character that would throw spears around, and I think you could say that Sunlight Spear was decidedly overpowered for your first playthrough, <laughs> but you could get it just by getting 30 Sunlight Medals, which was not that hard to get if you just wanted to do, like, in my case, uh, just get, just get summoned for the Congregation fight over and over again, which is over in like 10 seconds if you have the Heavenly Thunder spell. Uh, so I got that really early in the playthrough, and I just plowed through bosses with it. Uh, in this case, they specifically made it so you had to defeat the final boss to get it. Which functions both as a lore explanation, it, it's, it's both good for lore and good for balancing, probably. Get the most powerful uh, lightning spear after you beat your first playthrough, so you have to use it in New Game Plus. And you get it after defeating what is basically the, the end result of Gwyn. Then you get the Firelink Greatsword, which is a fire and physical attack weapon. 10 to 20 requirements, D with uh, strength and dexterity, no spellcasting scaling, interesting. This is interesting because it's this this seems to basically be the coiled dra the coiled sword but used as an actual usable weapon. The Lords of Cinder linked the first flame and this great sword was wielded by their deific de oh, deific manifestation. This coiled sword found thrust into the bonfire it existed long before the throneless lords themselves. The skill is Ember. The fading flame momentarily illuminates and launches itself forward. Interesting. That actually sounds like a cool attack. Slightly caught off guard by being a great sword. That's cool. I thought it kind of seemed like a smaller weapon than that. And here's your cover art armor right here. The Firelink set. Which I believe is what more or less what the uh, boss was wearing. It's also clearly the, the armor from the cover of the game. Helm of the Soul of Cinder, a deific manifestation of the Lords of Cinder who linked the first flame. It resembles a knight's helm, but bears hideous burns and contortions. A misshapen crown can be seen upon its rear. It exists as a symbol of the great lords and the noble act of linking the fire, although it is no more than an empty husk. Any change of the dialogue here? Ooh. It resembles knight's armor, but bears hideous burns and contortions, taking the shape of a deathly rib cage. Nice. Yep, you can you kind of see the ridges in there. I guess, yeah, that is... I never noticed that before, but yeah, the back of his helm is, is like half of a crown burned onto it. What a crazy little visual. This poor armor set. <laughs> Alright, let's go for the other trades we can do in here. First of all, you can trade in a vertebra shackle for Lucatiel's mask. This is the type of thing you can basically just find online as a, as a list of things. Although, or if you want, you can do trial and error and just keep giving them things and see what happens. So I have the very good carving. For the thank you carving, I need to give them a hidden blessing. Where is that? There we go. Thank you. 
Next up for the hello carving, I need an alluring skull. Where am I alert? There we are. There you are. And, oh help me, is a sacred chime. Here we go. I had to make a quick trip back to the uh, camp, but I got my sacred chime now. Help me! Next up's gonna be a shivering stone. Shriving stone. It is a shriving stone, damn it! <laughs> I can never stop saying shivering. In my defense, I never encountered the word shriving. Ever. <laughs> That's really about all of them, then. Uh, I could get a porcine shield for an undead bone shard, but I don't have any more of those left. That'll have to wait till next playthrough. Lucatiel's mask. A mask attached to a, to a ceremonial hat. A hollow once fought valiantly with this mask, but feared the fading of herself and implored a comrade to remember her name. Perhaps that is why this gentleman's mask is named after a woman. And that is one of the last little details of Dark Souls 2 left in this game, was the Lucatiel quest line. Alright, time to test all of our little carvings. Hello! Thank you! Very good! I'm sorry. Help me! They're such exclusively positive and friendly carvings, aren't they? Alright, so we're about ready to go New Game Plus. I realize I've been a little scattershot because this took longer to do than I, than I thought it would, and so I've lost my train of thought a little bit. So just to recap, the things you want to do before you go to New Game Plus. You're going to want to do every trade you want to do with the crows, because you only do each trade once per playthrough. Granted, a lot of them aren't super interesting. Uh, a few specific infusion gems, a few upgrade items, but largely stuff that you probably don't need in huge supplies, but they're there if you want them. Check out the table online. Uh, get your eight Titanite slabs, if you can. Maybe seven if you messed up Siegward's quest, because you can't get that one back, really. Kill all the crystal lizards throughout the game for their drops. Collect every Estus Shard, every Undead Bone Shard, defeat all the bosses, obviously. Uh, buy any upgrade materials you want, because you might not have access to them for a while, and get your infusions done and so on. That That's not to be understated either, because uh, you have to go get the coals again to do those infusions again. So even if you still have the gems required, you need the coals, to, you'll have to recollect the coals, because they count as key items, and they're going to be leaving you. Um... Any basic preparation stuff for your character, go ahead and respect them if that's what you want to do, because if you're... Most people won't be able to respect again until they get all the way back to the cathedral again, but some people, if you're like me, might be wanting to do, for example, the serious quest line, because you messed up the first time around, and they... F she will freak out if you even join Rosaria's Covenant, so that means you can't respect at all until you're done with that stuff. So, make sure you know what you want to be built as. And then, of course, you want to max out any covenants you have access to, because you can get the covenant items throughout the entire playthrough, but you a lot of them you can only turn in late in the game. The biggest defender is probably the Sunlight Covenant, which I was grinding towards in that little mini-series. I'm going to go ahead and give that a break and just go into New Game Plus, because the repetition setting in a little bit of, of trying to do invasions all the time. Uh, but I can continue to collect Sunlight Medals, and once I have 30 of those, I can turn them in, but I'll have to get all the way to Lothric Castle again to be able to, do, to turn them in. But that's not too bad for me, because I'm already doing sorcery this playthrough instead of faith, so... That just means I have more time to collect those to get access to those types of spells. But yeah, you can uh, max out your your Covenant ranking with... Uh, Blade of the Dark Moon, Blue Sentinels, Mound Makers, Aldrich Faithful, Watchdog of Farron, Rosarius Fingers, and Warriors of Sunlight. Or not, you can continue to grind them. You're, you're, uh, as far as I can, t can tell, your progress maintains itself. And so once you've done everything, and you've gotten every item, and you're all ready to leave the world, and you're definitely ready to leave, which has different meanings for different people, you can then either just go straight to your bonfire and go into New Game Plus, or if you want to be a bastard about it, you can run around Firelink Shrine and murder every single NPC to see whatever, whatever items they may or may not drop. Let me double check something. Do I have this lady's spells already? Yes. So, uh... I might be up to no good here. Don't mind me. Shield your eyes, little ones. If you don't want to see every single NPC viciously murdered, 
skip ahead to New Game Plus. <laughs> Avert your eyes. Yuria, thanks for the marriage. Oh, she survived. Whoops. It's easier when you can lock on. <laughs> And you get their ashes one by one. Now you guys know why I'm running around in Lautrec's armor now, don't you? <laughs> Suddenly it all becomes clear. And because just to be awful about it, I'm going to kill everybody except for the shrine maiden, and then I'm going to give her the ashes. Wow. He didn't even flinch. Oh! When a pupil strays from the path, the master must intrude. Prepare yourself. I can't complain. This old reverie had to end. <sighs> I'm a little bastard, aren't I? Patches. Oh, this is the wrong way. Patches, come out and play. You tried to trick people. Now what happens? You know what happens. You meet the Soul Great Sword. Is what happens, Patches. Patches. Hello, Patches. I knew something was wrong. Well, now it's my turn. I'm an unbreakable Patches. Nobody can crack me. Yeah, no one can crack you, right? How's that working out? Aha! Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt patches. Alright, fine. In the face. Block this! Why me? Why me? It's always fun to kill patches in every playthrough. Even if you're being saintly about it. Ooh, drop more stuff. The horse of ring and the winged spear. Interesting. He's still dropping stuff. Pierce shield. Oh, he dropped Zigward's shield. Oh, I never bought it, did I? Well, now I've got the entire set. And I didn't even have to pay money for it. He's just covered in loot. As it should feel when you murder a, uh, a merchant. It's like, yeah. Oh my god, just, there's just items everywhere. It's almost as if they were selling those. <laughs> It's always the, uh, that's always something I appreciated about uh, Fallout games, is that you can murder merchants and take all their shit. <laughs> Instead of it magically disappearing into the ether. I, person that I fulfilled their oath and made them really happy and now they're a shrine maiden and say I have a purpose now and... Oops! Ooh. Oh, weird. She drops a, a duplicate of the tower key. Interesting. I already had that, obviously. Interesting that she drops another one. Oh, Mr. Pyromancer item. Hey! It's Cornix's entire set. Attire of Cornix, Pyromancer of the Great Swamp. In the Great Swamp, it was customary to adorn oneself with articles of nature. Cornix favored the use of raven feathers. Ravens are said to have once been filing messengers, guided, uh, guiding the undead to the land of ancient gods. Without handing in any items, it immediately becomes clear already that uh, Yuria's dark set, or the black set, has shown up with her dress and her mask and everything. Attire of the three mentors of the Sable Church of Londor, this build mask belongs to Yuria, the, eld the second eldest. These maidens of a primordial serpent were renowned as founders of the Sable Church, which offered salvation for hollows is apparent that the women in black were highly skilled fencers capable of founding the Sable Church between just the three of them. Now, of course, we've got five ashes to go through. Look at this, Cornix Ashes is actually a hand with a, with its, has a fire in it. Irina's just a poor shawled arm. Carla's looks sort of like it's kind of grasping at you. Patches is definitely greedy looking. And Yuria is beckoning you closer. They all, they all have an expression at hand that actually reflects some element of what they do. Umbral Ash of Cornix the Great Swamp. Cornix was tired and defeated until he dis discovered one final pupil, like so many pyromancers before him. Irina was a frail woman. This frailty led to her becoming a saint of Karim and to her grand treachery. 
The spurned child of the abyss never dies, but phases in and out of, of its fringes. Only there, oh, only there is no one to search for her any longer. Patches never lost heart and never looked back. He marched in one direction, and that direction was a dead end. Did you see him passing by? Having three founders of the Black Church ensured Yuria's legacy would survive. Her two sisters could carry the torch, making certain their lord claims the flame for the sake of all hollows. Now let's see how she reacts to me handing these in. Ah! Well, well, what warm, umbral ash have we here? It's as if thy fate were with death entwined. But take no note of me, thy business is thine own. As by now thou surely knowest, there is little I love more than a gratuity of souls. <laughs> I'll try to keep an eye out, but it sounds like they might be the same dialogue every time. Ooh. It was worth a shot. <laughs> Immediately, there's four more embers and a few more copies of blessings in here. For the most part, it just means that they're gonna, she's gonna suddenly sell items that those characters used to sell. So suddenly, she has yeah a stock of every spell in the game, basically. So ba that kind of does mean that you don't have to worry that much about uh, about killing those NPCs because. You just get the items that they were selling anyway. The big thing is finishing their quest lines so that they actually sell every item. Because if they were, if uh, they died before you give them all of the scrolls or tomes or whatever, then you won't gain access to the items that they had access to, or you won't, you will never have access to certain items for that entire playthrough. All right, I recommend having a purging stone in your inventory if you have actually uh, gone through with getting hollowed, especially like me, level 99 hollow, because obviously I did the whole hollow storyline. Just make sure you have one of those before you kill everybody. Speaking of killing everybody... It's, it's really impressive how much that misses. <laughs> it looks so huge. Vile oh, boot. I'm but a... Oh, old woman. This throws your heart. Whoopsie. Do we just feel like a monster? Yay. I am apparently bad at aiming. Oh well. She'll get the more personal touch. Yep. Her eyes fall back out if you gave them to her and they return to your inventory. That's fine though, she doesn't, she can't die and she doesn't hold a grudge if you kill her. In fact, she even tells you at one point if you give her the eyes and if you want to go back on your decision that you can kill her to get the eyes back. But here's the trick with these characters. Oh, they didn't come back. Hang on a second. I think I have to warp out. Here we go. Ta-da! They're all back and alive, which is creepy. These three specific characters cannot be killed, although they have varying reactions to you killing them. I'm truly sorry, but knowest thou not, I cannot die. So please, Ashen One, allow me to serve thee. Aww, poor lady. Ashen One. How about the hag? <laughs> A malicious sort thou art, but marvel on. Remember well, I am undead, bound forever by the shrine's curse. Well, little sense in timidity now. I'll have thee for all thou'rt worth. <laughs> <laughs> There's such fun little pieces of lore there. Because, yeah, she's she's here forever and she'll never die. But she knows what you did. And here's the side effect. Uh, if I understand correctly, I don't exactly have the numbers memorized. Oh, yeah, it looks like... I'm pretty sure Prism Stones used to cost 10. Now they cost 12. So everything... It looks like everything has increased in prize by 20 per, price by 20%. 
as given away by the part where she talks about how, uh, it's like, well, no sense being timid now. I'll have you for all you're worth. So if you kill her, you increase the prices of everything in her store for the rest of that playthrough. <laughs> but she'll still sell to you, so that much doesn't change. Ashen one. In fact, her, her dialogue doesn't even really change from that point on, I don't think. How about you, Andre? Overstep not your bounds, cousin. I may serve, but I'm no slave. I have business I must attend. Be gone. Yep, that's it. Overstep. That's it. He's just there now. And he won't deal with you. You can't kill him, and he'll keep coming back just like the others do. But he's got no he's got no interest in working with you anymore. So like I said, very varying reactions. For her, it's like nothing happened. For her, there's a punishment, and for him, he may he may as well not exist now, except for as this annoying clinging in the background of all NPC dialogue and the entirety of Firelink Shrine that never ends. And he's not even working for you anymore. I may have forgotten something somewhere, which is possible. But by and large, I think I'm ready to continue on. The consequences aren't exactly massive if you forget something, but there's just a lot of little things to follow up on if you want. Let's begin our journey into New Game Plus. At long last. you're equipped to fight if you come here because uh you still have to fight your way past the boss and he's tougher now because it's new game plus although i have heard reports that new game plus might not be the hardest thing in the world but anyway we're gonna murder some fools mostly by one-shotting them but honestly what else would you expect uh from the opening zone where they were easy to kill the first time around so this will be a somewhat less ooh, proud paladin soul i believe that those all the souls actually are more powerful now uh so you get more of them this time around. So this will be a, a faster playthrough than my original one because there's less exploration to do. Uh, generally the same items drop all over the place and the same bosses exist and the same secrets exist and so there's not a lot of new reveals that I never saw the first time. Uh, the main difference in New Game Plus, besides the difficulty ramping, is the fact that uh, you can get the second boss soul items from various people uh, because you obviously you can only trade each boss soul in once and uh oops can't lock onto that guy because he's not awake yet uh, the biggest playthrough the biggest difference for items is that uh, in new game plus get out of here buddy in new game plus you can now uh, get the plus one versions of various rings each ring rings actually level up in new game plus by the way, I'm still a, I'm still this guy. I'm still hollowed. Level 99 hollowing, so that carries into New Game Plus. But if you look at my keys, every key is gone now of the entire game. That means you can't access shortcuts anymore. Any coals and stuff like that are gone. But importantly, for my hollowing, uh, my Dark Sigil is gone. Which means I can now, like I was saying earlier, use a Purging Stone. And get my old face back. So I'm no longer hollowed. Which, admittedly, doesn't really do much, as far as anything in the game goes, but... Hey, my character's not beef jerky anymore, so that's fun. I'll go ahead and use an Ashen Flask, because this is really the only enemy around here. So, are there new spawns in New Game Plus? Honestly, I have largely not really spoiled myself about what secrets there may or may not be throughout this game. But I I don't think that the playthrough rant changes that much. I've heard, I think I've heard that the it's not quite... Is not quite Dark Souls 2 as far as reinventing large chunks of the campaign for New Game Plus. This guy's going to be fun to fight because he's going to be resistant to various sp spirit spells. Here we go. Let's test out my one... I have one dark spell on me right now. Deep Soul. Here comes the roll. That'll be a nice vulnerable uh, spot to hit him. 
Nope, not particularly her damaging either. So effectiveness varies here. Oh! But he, ooh, but he, hit, he hits me just fine. Quick heal. So yeah, the uh, difficulty is going to vary a bit depending on whether the enemies are magic resistant or not. He's probably going to roll again. Oop, not quite. Boom! That nice, that fun little AoE on the ground. Oh, I admittedly largely have that spell on me just because it's fun to use. The uh, one that puts crystals all over the floor. Uh-oh. Oh, he missed me. Interesting. He's a durable one. Ooh! I thought he was going to roll at me. I was I was preparing to dodge a completely different animation. Ow. So these guys in particular, I would say, are probably going to be disproportionately harder in New Game Plus than they were in the first playthrough in a way that many enemies won't be. It'll, it'll depend on a lot, a lot on what the stats are. Oops. Him and his crystal wall. Got him. There's a dramatic piece of the animation to kill him in. Alright. So in a moment here, we're gonna get very, very familiar with what the resistance level is of, uh, of Eudex Gunther. Because I'd have no clue. As of right now, I don't know what any, and uh, I don't really know what most bosses, el uh, elemental strengths and weaknesses are. Uh, I do have, if I want, need to fall back on I have a Pyromancy Flame plus 10. I went ahead and spent some Titanite and a slab on that because I have so many of them. And I've got, I've also got a maxed out uh, spellcasting weapon for this character, uh, for sorceries. Don't have a chime or talisman maxed out on this character. But if I do encounter an enemy, a uh, boss that is tough and totally resi resistant to both dark and regular sorceries, then I will have a flame to fall back on. And I believe I have pretty much every, I do have every sorcery in the game. I probably have every, every, I probably have every miracle and pyromancy, not counting some that may be exclusive to covenants I didn't go through yet, which is basically all of them. But we'll see how this goes. This will be an experiment, and I'll try to, I'll try my best to get every upgraded ring along the way, even if I have to go back for them because I, because I go back past them on accident. <laughs> Here we go. It's still good to be relatively thorough playing through levels, it's because there's upgrades all around that you don't want to... It's be best to have a supply for. Haha, ha, you're getting beat to get death by my melee weapon and I'm not even a melee character. You should be embarrassed. It's actually not, it's really not working out. It's hilariously ineffective. Oop. I should just get that one last poison point in faith so at least I can do the base damage of the weapon. Because <laughs> not even that's happening right now. Oh well. Hey big guy, how you doing? Sure hope I can dodge your attacks well enough to hit you. Phase 2 will be easier. Oh yeah, phase 2 should be much easier as a spellcaster at range. That, that's the part that's tough for melee. But phase 1 might be really tough as a spellcaster. We'll learn. Oops. Tried to lock on too early and did a nice 180. Might want to do Soul Greatsword just because it's faster. We'll see. Ow. That was not a successful roll through the enemy. Oh. Alright, you got me while I was casting. That's going to be a problem for me. This will take some practice. Aha! Oh shit, no! How did I do that? I tried to cast and I ended up jumping. I'm not sure what wire got crossed in my head that time. That's it. Whoa! I'm sorry. Are you okay? I guess welcome to phase two, huh? Holy shit! <laughs> the damage is no joke. Ow. Ow. Rude. So the dam- Okay. Watch out! Damage def- de Ow! Maybe I was wrong about which one was gonna, be, was gonna be easier. Whew, the camera seems weirdly- Oh right, it backs up because of how big he got. There we go. So we've got our coiled sword, we've got the first boss down, and in like five or six hits I want to say. That was roughly to be expected. He's the first boss of the game, it's new game plus. I'm casting with most of the best spell buff items in the game, probably. I wasn't playing my best though, because dear lord, I was getting slammed in the face. <laughs> I uh, 
Gonna have to work on the evasion part better. Although, yeah, it's always, I always have trouble with beast mode in particular, when he goes into flaily, weird animal man mode, where he's, he's a weird tentacle monster, and I'm like, where's the... Which part's the attack? Oh, crap, here it comes. Here it comes. If yeah, we're fighting a lot of regular enemies, I'm gonna want to use the Soul Great Sword because it has it has AoE, which is good for how you often fight groups of people at once. And it's actually a faster cast. I, I think it's a faster cast than my... Ow. You have to be careful about this, though. At some point, as we p progress through the uh, New Game Plus playthrough, I may invest souls into getting the basic stats for some melee weapons so that I can convert to that. May take some kind of sword and uh, use magic weapon on it to buff it up, so that it then scales with uh, it's scaling with my magic as, as a result, and so that'd be my alternate for my what's currently a a, ring, a what's currently just a sword that exclusively functions as a uh, spell buff. That's the reason why I don't have the uh, the stat requirements for it because I uh, you don't need to you actually don't need to be able to wield it properly to have the uh, full uh, damage buff. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching, like always. This has been the first episode of New Game Plus, which largely existed in the previous playthrough, but it was me transitioning into New Game Plus. Uh, this took a while to record, and, and it's probably going to take a while to edit. There was a lot to, to cover here. But, uh, things should be straightforward from here. Just going to progress through the next 18 bosses with this new build, adapt as we go along, and try to figure out how to... how to play in this very different style, where some things are going to be way easier, and some things are going to be way harder. Partly because I can't just punch things in the face with a stabby bit. And I've got to do a long, slow casting time, which is very rewarding with how much damage it does, but finding the right opening for it's going to be tough. And the fact that I have, a, have to use two weapons at once for maximum damage with, means no shield, so... This will be interesting. It'll be different, if nothing else, from the last playthrough. See you guys next time.